All right, so today we're going to be reviewing and ranking all of Tim and Paula's latest rec um, newest record, Currents. New how? New as in a few years old at this point. <laughs> but, um, but there's 13 songs on this album, and we're going to be... So the premise of this show is that we're ranking from our least favorite to our number one tracks in, in the whole album, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we're going to be spending 15 seconds each song explaining why we put it where we put it and just doing that for 13 songs. All right. So let's get started with the first track. So least favorite song, number 13. Uh, I'll go first. And so for number 13, I chose... I chose Gossip, and it's mainly, I always skip this song because I figure the wah-wahs, I always skip this song because it's just kind of boring, <laughs> but and I think why it might be called Gossip, it's just an instrumental, there's just a lot of wah 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 wahs going on, and just like a little gu guitar, like all by itself, so I imagine the wah 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 wahs are just people talking, and then the guitar is kind of like Kevin just minding his own business, not wanting to partake in like Gossip, mm -hmm. but just because it's an instrumental, I put it all the way at the end. Yeah, I mean, we tend to put interludes um, towards the end because they're leading up to something better. Mm -hmm. So they do their job, but in terms of like ranking them within the album, yeah, they're going to be bottom half for sure. Unless it's a really good interlude, and we've had a couple of those recently. So yeah, it just depends. All right, so what was your 13, Mike? My 13 was Love Paranoia. It did not stick with me. I really? tried to get into the song, like actively tried to like find good things about it, and there are, it's just not for me. Yeah, so I had to put it, and it's weird because it's a natural song, it's not interlude. I, I just didn't like it that much. For sure. Okay, so let's move on to 12. So 12, I said, I said let it happen for 12. So the reason I said let it happen is Wait, just, are you serious? Just because I like the gibberish and everything. I like how it sounds. I love it. But it's just too long, dude. I always go it to It drags the, for it, you? It drags for me. I always go to the next song. That's the main reason I have it down so low. It's a good song, but it just drags. 12? 12. You put a couple of interludes on top of let it happen. Like, oh my god. First upset. <laughs> beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep. 12. Is that your final answer? I'm not doubting you. It's just 12? Final answer because it drags. Damn. And that, that stands out to me more than the, like, the content of the song. Wow. Okay. He, he really let this song just happen. I mean, yeah. that's why I called it that. Okay. Yeah. For me, number 12 has to be Gossip. Gossip? <laughs> you put it as your last song. And I'm not saying the last song in terms of the ranking. Um, it's just an instrumental, but if you put it within the context of the album, it leads up to less I know the better. That's why I didn't put it last, because it leads up to something really great. For sure. All right, so number eleven, number eleven, I said, Nangs. So here's the thing, um, it's just short. I like the pulsing of like the psychedelic synths and the Tyler the Creator type keys, but and the sudden intru introduction of the percussion. But it's just repetitive and short. But I like it a lot for the instrumental. Define Tyler the Creator keys. Like, what do you mean by that? Like spooky, haunting keys. Scary. Like, what if you re-listen to it, you'll know what I mean in a okay. second. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's why I put it. Eleven. Eleven is Nangs for me too. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Hold up. Let me start the timer. Go. Uh, like I said with um, gossip, it leads up to less than it better. Nangs leads up to the moment, which is the next track in the on on the actual album, and it's a great prop up, but in and of itself is not much. I feel it. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to ten. Number 10, so I don't know if anybody really likes this song, honestly. I always forget it, but I said, because I'm a man. So literally whenever I think of this song, I just remember the because I'm a man woman part, and that's about it. I just feel like 
it's too dreary and it's too like wah 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 wah. It, That's like the entire album though is wah wah wah. No no no, but this is really <laughs> wah wah wah, and for that reason I just kind of forget about it. That's just me. Okay. All right. So number ten. Number ten is past life. Past life. Yeah. I'm trying to think back why I don't like it. I think me not remembering how the song goes already kind of summarizes why I put it at number 10. Because it's just not as memorable as the other songs on the album. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sure. Like, do you, can, you, can you recreate the melody right now for Past Life? Um, uh, mm -mm, I just know it sounds... Whenever I think about it, I think of space. Because it sounds like... Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. Gotcha. And it has the interlude. He's like, now I remember. And it's all like distorted, like the vocals. It's kind of like telling a story. Okay. And see, now I remember, but off the top of my head, it just didn't stick with me. Yeah. So. And it's funny that, that you talk about talk about it like that, because for my number nine, I said past life too. Um, the reason I said past life... It's a trippy song about the serendipity of like running into a past lover and like the emotions that come with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like it for the story and the sounds, but I, you know, alone it's just kind of like, it's more of an, a glorified interlude. Yeah. But I like the story in it. So we kind of flip flopped. Uh, my number nine is because I'm a man. Because I'm a man. Yeah. So you had dad's your number 10, that's my nine. I had number 10 as past life, you had number nine is past life mm -hmm. um i mean when you get to the middle part of your ranking it's it's harder i feel like than your top, top. half yeah. because you're trying to hash out how it edges out how it, this song i just this one out just by a little bit in the ranking i'm not really talking about the song but that's the hardest part always with me is like trying to figure out what goes on in the middle and so for because i'm a man that's why i put it right above past life I can actually remember because I'm a man. Not the best line because I'm a man, woman. Not the best line. Yeah. But it's still memorable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like the, I don't know, the guitar on that, on the, especially in the chorus, the funky guitar that he has on there. It's catchy. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So now we're on eight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Real quick. So for my number eight... You might hate me because I get the feeling you might put it up kind of high, but I put the moment. So the moment, I really like it because it starts out with like two kind of sad songs and then this is the upbeat one, you know, like the upswing mm -hmm. uh, and that like really gets you into it. I feel like it's not as lyrically, I I'm not into the lyrics as much. I'm more into the instrumental and how happy it sounds. Yeah. But I like the message of how you're supposed to like live in the moment, if that makes sense. Okay. So yeah. That's why I put it at number eight. Well, what's your number eight, Mike? My number eight is Reality in Motion. Reality in Motion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like this song. This is one of those, um, there's so many other better songs syndrome on top of that. But again, within the context of the album, it's like the first like mood swing, like up change in terms of like a happier, like more optimistic kind of vibe. And it it's a, I don't know, good song to break into that. Yeah. No, I definitely feel it because a lot of this album is like, kind of sad. If you think yeah, about it. it's it's like, it, I mean, he's clearly going through a breakup, right? Yeah, yeah. Within the entire album, but he's also like, trying to go through this metamorphosis of like his old self and his new self. That's what I felt like. Mm hmm. Um. Uh... Okay, so do you want to do number seven and then do a brief, like, break? Yeah. Okay, so real quick, let's move on to seven. So for my seven, th honestly, at this point, I don't know about you, but, like, brief, like, break from the 15 second thing. I feel like it was really hard because all the songs are just so good. Mm hmm It's not, I feel like not even at this point, I feel like a little earlier I was still struggling to get, like, oh, this one goes here, this one goes here, you know? Yeah, and you didn't want to, like... It sounds stupid, but you don't want to offend the song. Yeah. You know, it's, you don't want to do it. Um, not, you don't want to give it like, or give it. You want to give it the justice it deserves, and putting it blatantly on, on such like a a ranking like this is kind of cut and dry when it is the furthest thing from that. But that's what we're trying to do. 
<laughs> that kind of like my let it happen thing. The reason I, it's just yeah, that that I still hurts. Listen, I still listen to it. But twelve, I skip half of it. <sighs> so think about it like that. If you always listen, that's to still, half that's of still a song. longer than some of the songs you ranked above that though. But I listen to the whole thing. I mean, true. I guess, <laughs> that that's just me. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. So seven, right? All right. So I said seven. Eventually. So I feel like this is a breakup classic. Super powerful song talking about the remorse some of us have in the process of trying to like end a relationship with someone and like hoping the best for them. And I think the like change in tone in the chorus does an amazing amazing job at reflecting like just how badly Kevin wants their partner to be happy in the end, you know? He's not trying to hurt them. Yeah. It shows his goodwill. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a powerful like song instrumentally too. Mm Mm-hmm. Number seven? Number seven. So for me, number seven is the moment when you put it at number eight. So when you said, oh, you might hate me for this or you might not like me, I'm like, no. I was looking <laughs> on my list. Like, we're, we're pretty much, like, you know. Pretty equal. Pretty equal. Like, kind of similar in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And the moment. Uh, I thought it was a great song. But then, um, I don't know, with, when, when you listen to the album... From book to uh, like start to finish. Uh, after that, you listen to Yes, I'm Changing. Yeah. And it's, it, it gets overshadowed. It's like, the moment is a good song, but Yes, I'm Changing is a bit better. See? Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm saying. It's hard to choose. Like, yeah. Hard to position them. For me, when I got down to the middle of my ranking, the moment Reality in Motion, because I'm a man, I honestly could like flip-flop like depending on the day. Yeah, those three songs, they're not, not that they're similar to each other, it's just, like, to me, they're pretty equal in quality. Yeah. All right. So. Take a break. Let's take a quick. Play some music. Quick break. Play some music real quick. We left off at six. But let's get back into the ranking. So we were on, we left off at six. And so I'm just going to start off with my number six. And for my number six, I said Disciples. So that this is another one of those songs that is kind of like um, uh, happy in a sense. It's kind of, I think of it as a I've got a crush type of song. I just think it, I think like the synth breakdown and the cymbal tap, like, um, you know, where it like taps and everything stops like, and then it goes back into it. I really like that song. I really like that part of the song. And just in the album, it's one of the highlights for me. Your number six, Mike? Uh, for my number six, it is Disciples. Really? Yeah. Dude, this always happens. Disciples. Uh, same reasons for Josh. It's a great song. I just feel like <laughs> there's five other songs on top of it. And I really do like... Uh, um, just the lyrical content about it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty honest and introspective. And, like, it, there's nothing to uncover. Like, he says what he, he like, he means what he said. <laughs> and I like that. It's, yeah. it's a pretty short and, like, straightforward song. Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. So let's move on to number five. So for number five, I said... I said reality in motion. So I thought it was really synth heavy, and I love it for that. The drums especially, plus like Kevin's trippy vocals really complement everything that's like going on in the song. And the break in the middle with just like Kevin singing and like a lone like shaker is a really good like come down. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and plus, I didn't know this, but I looked into the lyrics. It's basic reality in motion. He's talking about like sex. So it's kind of like you wouldn't... When you think, like, a sexy song or a sex song, you think, like, R&B, you're slow, not, like, psych rock, mm-hmm. you know? Interesting. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Does, I it, just, does it say that? Like, does it imply it in the lyrics? It implies it, but I feel like vaguely. Someone in Genius just said that's pretty much what it might be. It's about banging. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, so what was your number five? Top five, top five. Uh... <laughs> Yes, I'm changing. Number five. Yes, I'm changing. Yes, I'm changing. Great song. 
I, I mean, I, I say that a lot. But actually, though, I, I love the chorus and the dreamy, bluesy vibe and the sad pop uh, tone it has. Uh, I, I can listen to that and while still being happy because of how good the song is. You know? Like, you don't have to be in that mood to appreciate the song even more. Um, yeah. No, I agree. I just, I don't want to say too much because it's placed in mind. But, no, I totally agree with what you said. Let's go on to number four. So, for my number four, I said, new person, same old mistakes. So, I feel like... So I feel like this is top three for some people, maybe even number one. I like it. Ezekiel's going to kill you. Probably. It's a classic, though. <laughs> I love how it sounds. I love how you hear Kevin's voice where he sounds, like, super infatuated. And then he's just kind of, like, blind to everything that might be going wrong with, like, new relationship or what he's going through. And then he has this other voice, like, telling him, like, hey, you shouldn't do that. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I feel like it's an inner battle we all face. And I really like this. But, yeah. Uh... Damn, out of your top three, is it because you like the Rihanna version more? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll ex- I might Yeah, you better explain yourself. I might explain myself. No, you, no, you better. For sure. You won't make it out alive out of the song I room. Okay. Number four for me is Eventually. Eventually. I think that was the song that really made me look at Currents at a different light. Because Currents came out, I didn't listen to it as much as I should have. And then we saw Tame Impala at the Greek Theater in Berkeley. And then when he played Eventually, I was like, I get it. It clicked. And then I went back to the album, listened to it for like two months straight. And it all started with Eventually. And I know it, I didn't have to have any song in particular to do that. It's just Currents is a great album. But that was when it all clicked for me. Like even just the visuals, I don't, I can't even remember. I have it on my Snapchat, like saved. But yeah, being in that moment when he played that song live was, I don't know, noteworthy. For sure. Yeah. I, yeah, eventually as the lead single too, I think it came out, yeah, it came out before The Less I Know The Better. It was a really good song. Okay, so number three. So this is probably where we have our biggest disagreement well second biggest disagreement well like you had let it happen in number 12 <laughs> that's how you ruin friendships <laughs> <laughs> all right so my number three was love slash paranoia so me i get oh. goosebumps every time i hear this song uh i really like the horns and strings at like the climax of the song because it tells he's telling a story how he's in love with this girl but he's paranoid he's like cheating on her and the climax of the song is him checking her phone and realizing that there was nothing there to worry about in the first place. And so then the tone of the song just changes to like somber and I like how the instrumental supports like this story. And that's why it's super hot, high up there for me. And also because I just relate to that feeling of paranoia Dang. in a relationship. Okay. Yeah. We're really similar and really different all at the same time. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, would, I'd never, I did not see that coming. Yeah. I just realized that, okay. What's your number three? Number three, yeah. All right, my number three is Let It Happen. <laughs> uh, I, I go back to when we saw him. He opened with the song, and then it does drag on. But I do like that. You get you get lost in the song. Within in the, the song. And the, you get lost in the sauce. And then at the end of it, he had that confetti, confetti rain, like confetti tsunami. I don't know. It's just raining down in the crowd and this was the end of the first song i was like what else can he possibly do to like open up with a bang like that like how is he going to end this i mean he ended better obviously like it's kevin parker you don't doubt him that's like dad and jesus <laughs> like but when he performed that i just saw what he wanted us to see along with the actual music man it, it's incomparable like it's great you could say he just let it happen. He he in, indeed, <laughs> indubitably. <laughs> All right. So number two. Okay. So for number two, top two, top two. We forgot to say top three. You said top five, but whatever. All right, top two. So I said yes. I'm changing. So this is one of my favorite songs. 
I love the way Kevin sings about how he's changing after having like an emotional catharsis like post heartbreak. Like it's kind of like that moment where it all clicks. Like you're not sad anymore. You realize like everything, you know, happened for a reason. You changed. You can let him go, forgive them, or recognize your wrongs in a relationship. And I feel like that's a really powerful and like beautiful revelation to have, especially if you've had it, you know. So I feel like I can relate. And I feel like instrumentally it's a good song. Yeah. And I like how it ends with uh, like the sounds of cars at the end. Because mm -hmm. it's almost like he's having a conversation with her, like just with his past lover on the sidewalk, like saying, hey, uh, I'm sorry. Or like, hey, we're both different now. We can move on. And he just like fades into the like busy, bustling streets, you know. And they never um, see each other again. Unless maybe tear up. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Have you been watching Big Mouth? I, I haven't, no. Oh, good. Okay, no. Yeah. Never mind. That's, that's, that's a really great description. Shoot. It's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> it's a really good song. Okay. Number two? Number two. The less I know, the better. Yeah. The kick, the, the bass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the rhythms. I saw, I don't know, I guess I really thrive and rely off on like, live performances. When I first listened to the song, he performed it on Colbert, um, the late the light night show. And that was the first time I checked the song out, checked the album out. And that was like, why did it take me so long? <laughs> It's such a good song, and then when you told me, like, yeah, this is all Kevin Parker, like, the band that he has when he plays live, they're just there to play the instruments, and that even blew my mind even more, because this is, this song was made entirely by one person. The layers of death, like, the from the lyrics to the actual instrumental, insane. Crazy. <coughs> crazy. Kevin Parker's crazy, dude. <coughs> I'm actually curious. Ooh. Actually, I think I know what your number one is now, but yeah. um, but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, but yeah, I agree. Less less I know, the better is a very good song. I I haven't got tired of it yet. Yeah. And that's probably why it's my number one. Mm. So for my number one, I said the less I know, the better. Um, I didn't write any notes on this just because I've listened to it so many times. Like mm -hmm. on that alone, I feel like. I like the fact that it just speaks on jealousy, how you won't, once you break up with someone, the less you know, the better, because you don't want to, you know, going down that path of finding out more, you're just going to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And you find out about how he sees her like kissing Trevor at a party. Yeah, screw that guy. Yeah, fuck, Tre fuck Trevor. Fuck Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and we all have a Trevor, you know? Or have, like, related to that imagery of your past lover being with someone that you don't want to see, with, see them with. It's really simple, to the point. The bass line's juicy. Great song. It honestly almost broke my heart when I found out Kevin Parker said he didn't like this song at all. He just wanted to write, like, a pop 80s hit, I think. That's what he was going for. So really? He, yeah, he said he didn't like it. Oh, yeah. Ouch. That's like one of his better songs. Yeah, I think it's one of his best, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I really like it for how relatable it is, how punchy Dang. it is. I think it's a classic. It's a good... Like the riff and then the the sense, like the piano and keys Dang. behind Dang. it. Dang. Exactly. Dang. Like they play off each other so well to where it's really hard to get tired of the song. Okay, so I think you probably know my number one already it's new person same old mistakes it has to be the way it ends the album it's ethereal atmospheric i can go keep going on and on about like with adjectives trying to describe it still won't do it justice and i feel like it's the better sibling of let it happen where it does drag on a little bit but not as much as let it happen and the fact that it ends on such a good note as with this album, I don't know. I I can't rank any song above that. No, I I can agree and totally understand why yeah. you have it as number one. Dang. So that was our ranking of Currents. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share, Mike? 
if you haven't checked out the album yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> that, because that was me when, the, like, two, three months out after the album came out. I still really haven't listened to it. But when I did, I just, I kicked myself, but then I, it was fine because Kevin Parker was like, you know, it's okay, just keep listening. <laughs> See, the thing about this album, I think, is... Ultimately, I see it as a perfect album to listen to if you're going through heartbreak, you know? I think but it's not sad. It's, sad it's not sad. Yeah, it's not sad. I mean, it is in some points, but it's not, like, uh, like overwhelmingly sad or just the like, entire thing is sad. Like self-harming or self-deprecating, I guess? It, it, it's self-aware. It's, yeah, yeah, It's It shows a lot of maturity. When you do, were describing how, what you thought about Yes, I'm Changing, I was like, that shows growth a a huge amount of growth in the person when it comes to being in relationships like that so that I think that's why like when I heard yes I'm changing I was like oh dude that was the first time I think I realized like there's a message going on here like he's you know getting better over heartbreak Mm -hmm. like there's other songs too and you hear it but like that really like hit me hard and just the whole um the bustle of the streets and like the situation I imagined him in. Like, I always imagine situations for each of the songs. Because mm-hmm. it sounds like they're vignettes of his life. Yeah. But, um... That's probably a fair thing to say. But, yeah. I think this is a classic for sure. It's like Kevin Parker's journal. Yeah. Dear diary. Dear currents. I wonder why currents, though. Changing into tides. Oh. I, see, I never thought about it like that. I mean, I just came up with that. I don't know if it's right, but, like, look at the album cover. Yeah, no, it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. It honestly makes sense. It's, like, a different type of motion that you get swift up on, whether you like it or not, whether you intended to or not. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. What should we rank next? That is the question. That is the question. Should we... I'm actually kind of down... For Harry Styles. Wait. I'm not not down. Let me just... Hold on. I think we should go left field and do something we're not comfortable with. Yeah? Well, Harry Styles doesn't make me uncomfortable. Let's just get that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the music, probably. Because I haven't... I'm by. Bi- I have the perception that... You're by. No, no, no. I have the perception that... Uh, uh, what's it called? That One Direction is that, you know, teenage, a band teenage girls listen to, mm-hmm. and it's just, baby, you love, you know, it's just that. And then when, uh, when Mariella showed us, showed us another One Direction song, I was like, whoa, this is One Direction. Which one? I don't remember, but it was different to the sound I'm familiar with, so I'm just, like, curious, I guess. I mean, I'm down to do Harry Styles. It's only 10 tracks. It's only 10 tracks? Dude, we could even double up. Yeah, but, no. No. I don't got time to do that. No. No, I'd be down to I'd be down to do it next. Next week, Harry Styles. Harry Styles self-titled. All right. Perfect. Cold cuts. You hear the hair perks.